Football star Douglas Murray has been a vocal critic of Hamas since the terror group launched their assault on Israel on October 7th last year. The outspoken commentator has continued his tirade into the new year, publicly blasting individuals and organisations who he sees as supporting Hamas. Conservative commentator Douglas Murray has consistently slammed Hamas and supporters of Palestine since the war broke out on October 7th, 2023. Mr Murray has made a point of highlighting the radical aspects of Hamas and how this terror organisation is different to anything we've ever experienced. Hamas targeted innocent civilians in Israel on October the 7th and it's a pretty unique terror organization Hamas because or an unusual one because yes it then wishes to use any innocent civilians in Gaza as collateral to their well, or indeed the main attack point for their war um, I mean no other uh, I mean, I can't think of an army that has behaved like this in history, um, which is one of the reasons why you know, Hamas is not an army, it's a terror group. It literally puts civilians in front of its own terrorists. It literally puts civilian buildings above its own terrorist infrastructure, its weapons storage units, its missile storage, and indeed its leaders. This is a sort of cowardly way in which Hamas acts. Douglas Murray has also engaged in many heated arguments with commentators who push a pro-Palestine agenda. Uh, first of all, I mean, your other guest, I mean, I don't know what kind of a creature he is. He's a kind of low-grade thug, as far as I can see. He's listened to nothing I've said. Yeah, yeah, I know, uh, because I'm Muslim. Monster. That's what call you know, so thing. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. No, it's racist. not that at all. It's not that at all. I just think that you're a very, I think you're just a very low-rent racist. But anyway, let me just get on to it. You say, you say, first of all, you say, I don't care about the death of Palestinian children. Yes, I do care. I care very deeply about it. But I also know that the responsibility for their deaths lies on Hamas, which has misgoverned their society for the last 16 years and now has been leading the country into being in a war with Israel. So yes, it's on Hamas this. Douglas Murray vehemently denies Palestinians are victims of genocide, slamming anyone who pushes this idea. Well, anyone who uses the term genocide in this context simply doesn't know what they're talking about or is a malevolent actor. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Week has travelled at all in his life, how far he's travelled, how many conflicts he's seen, but I'd have guessed none. And you clearly know nothing about this particular conflict, and you've obviously seen none of it. He doubles down on his support for Israel, saying the IDF do everything in their power to avoid civilian casualties. My counterpart here goes on about uh, the deliberate genocide of children and, and women. I mean, I know you, and this is the sort of thing I, I, I think you do. You sort of claim that there are bombs being deliberately dropped on children and old women. Why would Israel want to drop bombs deliberately on children or old women? I mean, it, you just again, it, it's just a shame you don't get out and see anything. Um, the Israelis do an incredibly careful campaign before bombings to try to make sure that civilians are warned to li leave areas that are about to be attacked. Everybody knows that. Everybody in the region knows that. It's a shame that that fact hasn't got to you. Douglas Murray also slammed the media for pushing a pro-Palestinian narrative and displaying a lack of empathy for Israel. Some of the spin on that is, is almost as if it shows the IDF is sort of so brutal that it even kills Hamas hostages who are Israeli. I, I just think this is another example of the international media and others just having this astounding lack of empathy for the Israeli people. Can you imagine what it was like for those soldiers who were in Gaza, knowing that at any point there are snipers, there are, there are uh, uh, booby traps everywhere, um, people coming out of tunnels that they've built at British and American taxpayer expenses and attacking them. Can you imagine what it was like for the soldiers who in that terrible moment made the life-changing mistake of shooting three people who turned out to be Hamas hostages. Murray also targeted the UN women's charity, slamming their response to the violence inflicted by Hamas and saying all women should rip up their membership. It was Groucho Marx who said, I don't want to belong to a club that would have me as a member. Well, I'm not sure any woman should want to belong to a group that would have Munro Bergdorf as their champion. But there's another good reason all women should rip up their membership of this group, in my humble opinion. 
Take a look at their reaction to the revelations of sexual violence by Hamas in October. Is there a reason, though, Sarah, that you can't specifically call out Hamas? UN Women always supports impartial, independent investigations into any serious allegations of gender-based or sexual violence. And within the UN family, these investigations are led by the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. It took the group a full 57 days after the Hamas attack to make any official statement. And even then, that was to condemn gender-based atrocities, or mass rape, as the rest of us call it. You know, we'll get back to the video in just a second, but this thing about gender-based atrocities, this is what they're calling it? This is the same exact BS that was being done during the Obama monarchy when they weren't called terrorist offenses. They called them like man-made interventions. Somebody got shot by a gun. It wasn't a gunshot wound. It was basically a pellet came out of a pipe that used ingredients that made a spark that caused the bullet to come flying out and then to hit somebody and to cause an injury or death. I mean, the stupidity, the idiocy, the moronicity, the retardedness of these groups. You can't have people calling out bad. You can't have people calling out evil when it happens right in freaking front of them. And look, if someone's going to tell me that the IDF, that there weren't some situations or things that happened with them or collateral damage or things that they did, might have done wrong, I'm willing to go and say, okay, fine. But the question you have to ask is, who started this? And I'm not talking go back 76 years or 80 years or 100 years or a couple of thousand, you know, your millennia. Let's just start with October 7th and take it from there. But see, nobody wants to start there. And when Douglas was <clears throat> discussing with Senk the Jenk, and basically, you've got to see our, inner, our video on that, folks. He sank the jank from the Young Jerks, uh, I mean the Young Turks, didn't have a clue, a clue as to what he was talking about, other than basically towing the Hamas line. Yes, Sank the Jank has said that he does nothing to do with Hamas. But then at the same time, at the same time, he basically doesn't want to understand the nature that the Gazans were given in 2005. Israel left the Gaza. The idea of soldiers came and literally pulled people, Jewish settlers, out of their homes that they had built and said, you can't be here anymore, and drugged them out of their homes and took them away. And Gaza in 2005 was there. And what did they end the Palestinians end up doing? Electing Hamas. What did Hamas do? They killed you know, the Houthi, they killed the people that opposed them, shot them in the back of the head, threw them off of buildings, did whatever they wanted to, got rid of them. Last 18 years have had billions and billions of dollars been siphoned through them, through American aid, British aid, from Western European countries, all thinking that it's going to go for the Gazan people, and it doesn't. It's there to buy rockets, build terror tunnels, get more ammunition, get everything I can do to continue to fight this war, this terrorist, um, you know, guerrilla warfare tactics against the state of Israel because it's in their charter, Hamas's charter, that the state of Israel cannot coexist, cannot live side by side, that that Israel must be eradicated from the face of the earth. It's plain and simple as that. And that, folks, is what we have on tap for you today. We're going to get back to the video. More Douglas uh, and his tirade against Hamas and the terrorists, you're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, and we bring this all to you all the time, folks, when, you know what, it's my political prescription, from my political perspective, of what happens when everything collides, when you've got Israel, Hamas, 
Palestine, social media, Douglas Murray, everything just coming crashing together. Let's get back to the video right now. That this group really has a problem with language and also with reality. So Munro Bergdorf and the UN Women's Group probably deserve each other. Douglas Murray also slammed pro-Palestine protesters for ripping down the posters of Israeli hostages across the globe. If you put up a poster to a missing dog in any Western city, that poster stays up. In city after city in America, posters of abducted Jewish children, including Disgusting. a old Disgusting. Baby, were put up and were ripped down by Vile. people who have been indoctrinated into hate of Jews. Nobody Contemptible. would rip down the poster of a missing dog, but from Dublin to Berkeley, they ripped down posters of abducted Jewish children. So no, I don't think there was Douglas, very let much me put care this to you. for that let me put this to you, Douglas. And when posed with the question of a solution to the war, Douglas Murray is not optimistic. The claim that he's making that there simply needs to be a greater trust on both sides, as it were, in order to push for a two-state solution, and that it's within Israel's grasp to hand the Palestinian peoples in the West Bank and Gaza a sort of reputable social democratic government structure that allows them to thrive economically and socially. It's a complete fantasy. Everybody can see it's a fantasy, mm. except it's certain people in the international arena who cling on to this very, very outdated model uh, for dear life. Um, there are very few people in Israel across the right or the left of politics who think that a two-state solution is remotely plausible at the moment. I don't think it's remotely plausible at the moment. I don't know if it ever will be, but it looks incredibly unlikely at the moment. Just as Douglas Murray says, the two-state solution, it has been proposed, it has been given, I don't know how many times by the Israelis, both to the Palestinian authorities, uh, Hamas, like you said, in 2005 when they left the Gaza, and yet, was anything done? Was any single brand new structure built in the West Bank or in Gaza? Modern hospital, modern school, modern amenities, a McDonald's, a KFC, a Burger King, a bank, university, a college, anything, brand new infrastructure, roads, an airport, with the kinds of money that they received to hold open and free and fair elections. Again, but no, holding on to power Hamas for 18 years, never holding an election since then, holding on to power by what? By force, by fear, by those kind of tactics. And then everyone's supposed to say, every, oh, two-state solution, two-state solution, two-state solution, two-state solution. Really? Has Hamas laid down their arms? Have they said, we'll lay down our arms? We'll agree to a two-state solution? There will be peace. We will take that out of our charter. Israel has a right to survive, has a right to be there. The Jewish people have a right to live. Where they're at is perfectly fine. We'll take the West Bank. We'll take Gaza. We'll have free and fair elections. No, they've never done that. Until that is done, there is no two-state solution, and there never, ever will be. Until Hamas decides and the terrorists decide to lay down their arms and put everything to rest and say, that's it. The past of the past, we're starting for future. We're going forward from now on. We're not looking back. We're looking forward. They're not going to do that. That's just a freaking pipe dream, folks. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser. And if you haven't done so already and you like the content of our channel, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and follow us. You all know what to do. Take a look at our video links above and below. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.